the 2002 Tom Cruise-led movie Minority Report was generally well-received at the time. I never thought it was a particularly fun movie to watch, though I did very much enjoy the filmmaker's exploration of the core sci-fi concept of crime prediction and determinism. Similarly to Blade Runner, a dystopian nightmarish future is presented to us with a visually stark and thematically foreboding tone. The film takes a little while to establish the parameters of the universe and how the pre-crime concept works, and therein lies the film's primary weakness. Because there's so much to set up and explain to the audience initially, the film is very exposition heavy at times. However, that's the only major complaint I have, besides that and the color grading, which I'm not a fan of, but that's just personal taste. With those criticisms out of the way, Minority Report has suddenly become a very relevant movie, once again due to our society's continued move towards disturbing levels of authoritarianism and how modern technology is becoming more prevalent and invasive in our private lives. Though the pre-crime police make use of psychics in order to stop murders before they happen, in the real world, the Chicago Police Department have begun trying to predict crime using algorithms. The Chicago PD is using an algorithm in order to generate a list of people from police databases in order to figure out who to target. Each individual on the list is provided a score based on arrests, shootings, affiliations with gangs, and other variables. The intent of the list is to predict who is next to be shot or shoot someone, and once the list is updated, authorities then go visit individuals with the highest scores at their home. The individuals are then told that they're on the list and that they are being monitored. There are also several other correct future technology predictions that this film has made, including self-driving cars. In the case of one such vehicle in the movie, if it's determined that you've committed a crime, it will drive you directly directly to the police station. Though self-driving cars aren't currently doing this in the real world, I wouldn't be surprised if they do someday, so I think we should leave this prediction pending for now. Augmented reality interfaces, including swiping, are also used in the movie, along with a heavy emphasis on iris recognition. Though the filmmakers were pretty close with this prediction because ID systems through eye scanning do exist nowadays, but it's actually facial recognition that's really taken off in a major way. However, they did accurately predict the prevalence of mass surveillance in big cities and personalized advertising. Already, we have advertisers making use of our internet history and cookies in order to tailor online advertisements to us. And in Minority Report, they take this to the next level. Instead of buying a ticket for public transport, a camera simply scans the eyes of passengers as they board. Interactive video advertisements in shopping malls detect a person walking by and speak directly to them using their name, attempting to gain their attention and sell the product. In department stores, there's a virtual human avatar that has access to your entire shopping history and will attempt to sell you similar products. Given our current technological capabilities and the cultural trajectory we're on, this kind of interface seems like it's a matter of time before it becomes a reality. So, on to the story. The year is 2054, and the setting is Washington, D.C., where murders are now non-existent because of the new pre-crime police department that stops murders before they happen. The department makes use of three extraordinary humans called precogs. They appear to be catatonic and spend their lives in a barely conscious state in a facility called the Temple, where they present their visions of the future to the pre-crime officers. The visuals they present can be quite cryptic and need careful analysis, but they provide sufficient visual and auditory information to allow the team to stop crimes before they happen. The perpetrators and the victims' details are presented on carved wooden balls, which seems unusual, but the reason for this is to ensure that the information cannot be falsified because the unique grain in the wood ensures that forgeries can be easily detected. Of course, nowadays, we would just make use of blockchain to guarantee transparency and prevent tampering, but the filmmakers could hardly have been expected to predict blockchain. Anyway, Cruz plays the primary character of John Anderton, who lost his son several years ago and who is now estranged from his wife and has become a drug addict. Colin Farrell's character of Danny Whitweir shows up from the United States Department of Justice to audit the pre-crime program, convinced that the system cannot be as perfect as advertised because human beings are the weak link in the process. The female precog, Agatha, regularly has strange visions of a past murder, but the technicians write this off as being an afterimage, an echo, which are not uncommon after murders have been resolved. When the precogs suddenly predict that John Anderton is about to commit the murder of a man named Leo Crow. A manhunt ensues, with the pre-crime unit now hunting one of their own. 
Anderton is determined to prove his innocence, as he has no intention of killing anyone and has never met this Leo Crow. He visits Iris Heinemann, the creator of the system, and she tells him that sometimes the precogs don't always agree when it comes to their predictions. An example of such a disagreement would be the unexplained vision Agatha experiences of the aforementioned past murder of a woman named Anne Lively. The system has no record of Agatha's vision of the murder, only recordings from the other two precogs, suggesting that her account may have been erased. Nevertheless, Heinemann tells Anderton that minority reports exist, which are visions that depict alternative futures that could come to pass. But minority reports are usually buried because they would throw the credibility of the pre-crime system into question. Anderton learns that his minority report may very likely be contained in Agatha's mind, so he's forced to return to the pre-crime department to kidnap her, but in order to do so, he has to first undergo dangerous surgery on the black market in order to have his eyes replaced or risk being detected when he approaches pre-crime. After Anderton gets Agatha out of pre-crime, he enlists the help of a hacker to help him extract more of the visions of his murder of Crow and also learn more about the past murder of Anne Lively. Meanwhile, Whitweir learns that there's a reason Agatha keeps presenting visions of Anne Lively's murder. He presents his evidence to the director and founder of pre-crime, Lamar Burgess. Whitweir investigates the visions and finds that there is an unusual discrepancy. In one shot, the black-masked murderer is seen strangling lively in the water, with the ripples of the lake moving in one direction, but later the ripples are moving in the opposite direction. The reason for this is because someone was hired to kill Anne Lively, and the intention was for the pre-crime division to stop the murder from happening. Then, after the murder was stopped, someone else replicated the exact same scenario and killed her, thus making it look like the murder was nothing more than a past echo to the precogs. Burgess kills Whitweir because he is in fact Lively's killer, and wanted to get rid of her because she was Agatha's mother, who had sobered up after being a drug addict and wanted to take her daughter back. Anderton and Agatha locate Crow's hotel room and find a massive amount of evidence that Crow was responsible for the disappearance of several children, including Anderton's own son, Sean. Devastated and furious, Anderton confronts Crow when he arrives and is about to kill him, but decides to change his destiny. As it turns out, Crow is not responsible for any of these children's disappearances, as the photographic evidence was all faked, and he was hired by someone to take the fall in exchange for his family receiving a big payoff. Crow grabs the gun and kills himself, but by the time the cops show up, it looks like Anderton had killed him, case closed, or so it seems. Anderton is placed in custody and haloed. His wife, Lara, confronts Burgess about the murder of Anne Lively. Burgess claims he's never heard of her, but says he'll investigate her drowning. This is when Lara realizes Burgess must be the killer, as she never mentioned that Lively had been drowned. She manages to free Anderton from prison, and then at a banquet to celebrate pre-crime, Anderton publicly displays Agatha's visions of Burgess killing Lively, and Burgess makes a run for it. One last pre-crime murder is predicted by the precogs. This time, it's Burgess killing Anderton. Burgess is presented with an impossible dilemma. If he kills Anderton, the pre-crime system will be validated in the eyes of the public as a perfect system, but Burgess will be jailed for life. If he doesn't kill him, then the system will be discredited because the prediction will prove that people can alter their destinies. Burgess instead shoots himself. In the end, the pre-crime system is shut down and abandoned with the prisoners released. Anderton reunites with his wife and they plan to start a family together and the precogs are freed and relocated somewhere safe and remote to live out the rest of their lives. Minority Report is a clever and thought-provoking puzzle box of a sci-fi film that makes many accurate predictions about future technology and explores the concept of personal choice and determinism in an interesting way. Remember, this film was released before the rise of social media networks and yet, it managed to correctly depict how online technology would one day obliterate our privacy. Similarly to Demolition Man, Minority Report has perhaps become a very relevant cautionary tale today, much more so than the filmmakers probably originally anticipated it would be. Future crime predictions may eventually become a reality by using big data analysis, algorithms, and machine learning to build a picture of an individual's past behavior and then try to determine the probability of them committing a crime someday. And just as Minority Report warns, such a system would be rife for false positives and abuse.